Oh, hello there, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Great to have you here again. If it's your first time here, you know what to do. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, and of course, leave me a comment down below. That will be greatly, greatly appreciated. Ugh, what was Tony Hinchcliffe thinking? What was he thinking? Can someone tell me what he was thinking? Do you have any idea what was going through his brain when he decided to grab that mic off of that lovely opener of a comedian? Why did he decide to spit such vitriol to him? Why did he decide to insult him in that way? Why did he think that was funny? And if you're wondering what happened over the weekend, it appears um, some video went viral on Twitter with an Asian comedian shared a video from a crowd where he basically introduced Tony Hinchcliffe on the stage. If you don't know who Tony Hinchcliffe is, he's obviously associated with Joe Rogan. He does the killer podcast called Kill Tony, which effectively is a platform for loads of up and coming comedians to get a chance to do 60 seconds of comedy if I'm not mistaken in front of a panel of industry heavyweights you know well-known stand-ups in their own regard and obviously get some live feedback from the crowd it's you know birthed the careers of a lot of people who are you know doing a lot of good things now at the moment and generally it's a bit of a laugh I do check in from time to time on the podcast it's definitely a good show so he's known you know he's a well-known kind of dude but he's also known to be a bit edgy he's also known to kind of skirt the line you know push the envelope press a few buttons that's kind of his comedy but you would imagine when you hear this video and i play this right after you would have the impression tony hinchcliffe and this guy had some sort of prior relationship that they were maybe fairly close that they maybe got each other to some certain extent but from what we can surmise from the video they didn't know each other that well and tony hinchcliffe decided to go on this pretty catastrophic tirade that has now resulted in what some might assume might be his cancellation i'm not too sure if that's correct i'm not sure if that's going to happen but you can be the judge for yourself here's a video now give it up for the one and only Tony Hinchcliffe. Oh, no. Hello, good evening. Welcome. Hello. How about one more time for the filthy little fucking... Whoa. <laughs> I'm gonna play the video and maybe mute the the audio so I don't get taken off of this platform. So let's just hear it. Let's just kind of you can read it on the screen, right? You can do you can do your readings. pretty bad right pretty pretty bad now don't get me wrong I'm, I'm all for edgy comedy I'm all for pushing the button or I'm all for kind of pushing up into the line and seeing what really pushes people's buttons and what really gets them agitated and sometimes you know trying to find the humor in the most darkest situations possible but considering what's going on in the world right now especially what's going on in parts of North America with the unprecedented levels of violence against you know Asian citizens in that country you would think you'd be a little bit careful about some of the jokes that you make towards you know people from that part of the world right you would be careful you would think you'd be a little bit um choosy with how you use your words and what sort of jokes that you make you just react just for self-preservation's sake not because you believe in cancel culture or you think that you should mince your word but just for self-preservation we've just come off the back of you know an intense lockdown for most of the parts of the world you've been without a way of making any sort of stable income you've now got back on stage the last thing you want the absolutely last thing that you'd want right now is to now be out of work again especially due to your own inability to maybe rein in the jokes a little bit you'd imagine so but also another part of me thinks hey there's no way he would have been this comfortable to have done that to a stranger right he probably just not he knows the guy from some in some way shape or form maybe not to a level that he thought he knew him because we all have we all have those friends right you know maybe we'll say something that they deem to be funny but it's not in front of people that you don't know and it can sometimes create a bit of a problem so maybe he's that kind of guy you would hope so but it's still isn't very this still isn't maybe the most desirable thing to do considering the circumstances or considering the times that we're living in and then of course to add injury to insult to make things even worse and if that wasn't bad enough tmz got involved in the action and decided to put together this entire article describing exactly what went down and even adding 
a follow-up interview with the comedian in question and it's going from bad to worse for your guy Tony Hinchcliffe bad to worse so it continues it says the following a white comedian used a cloak of comedy to spew incredibly racist rhetoric against another comedian the guy who introduced him on stage without batting an eyelash Tony Hinchcliffe famous for writing for the Comedy Central Roast series and working on the Joe Rogan podcast did a set last week in Austin where fellow comic Peng Dang who has Chinese descent introduced him at the Big Laugh comedy dang was more than um who was more than courteous in the intro telling the crowd to give it up for one of the only tony hinchcliffe but as soon as tony grabbed the mic he went on to say they're obviously very derogatory words that he used racism wasn't on dang wasn't lost on dang he posted the clip and wrote last week in austin i gotta bring up tony hinchcliffe this is what he had to say um happy asian heritage month now um one could argue tony hinchcliffe is famously known for being insult comic he is and that this is right up his alley he didn't mean anything by it even if true times have changed so these types of jokes aren't gonna fly anymore especially right now when violence against asians is spiking nationwide frankly these jokes are cheap and mean tony hasn't responded yet but this guy shows uh coming up in madison wisconsin this week and he runs a weekly podcast so maybe he'll address it sometime then obviously they're adding this little spice which i don't really like as a way to kind of you know threaten him into response so basically saying hey if you don't reply then i'm going to try and get your shows uh cancelled right in madison wisconsin which you know i'm not too sure how um much of that's really gonna bother tony hinchcliffe not getting his shows on i don't know you know big up everyone in madison wisconsin but i would imagine you know it's not the most um lucrative uh, destination to go to i would imagine and then of course mentioning the podcast as well is a good way to kind of you know try to run his sponsors completely away from his show which i'm obviously not big a fan but of course there's an update if we scroll up so at 11 uh, 19 a.m pt comedian thank then who just done a set during to do soon um, came on TMZ Live on Wednesday to give us some backstory into what led to the guy hurling a racial epithet at the Asians, um, aimed at Asians, sorry, and what was going on behind the scenes. So let's play and find out exactly how the actual comedian in question felt regarding the issue. Do you understand what? was behind this i mean was this a comedian <laughs> they're treating it like come on okay look what you said was obviously bad right come on let's let's be let's be real but they're treating this like like what they like they're having these um dramatic news segments don't get me wrong it's tmz it's not msbc it's not flipping cnn it's not fox but this is a bit ott isn't it a little bit don't you think a tiny bit i don't know let's continue trying Have to you be had funny any... trying to be edgy trying to be racist uh, no, I do not know his um, attention behind this, um, but I can tell you this. Um, I've been in this country, I'm from China, been in this country for almost 11 years. I lived in Alabama, Georgia, Texas. Ha he seems like a sweet guy though, doesn't he? Right? He doesn't seem like somebody, again, I don't know if he's playing off of the cameras, but he doesn't strike me as a as the kind of person that have the same sort of sense of humor as a as a Tony Hinchcliffe he seems like somebody that's probably made for TV he seems like you know he's he's a system industry type of guy clean cut raised probably the right way you know just imagine how hard it must be to have con tried to convince his parents you know from that part of Asia that he went to pursue a career in comedy right I'm pretty sure they weren't doing backflips and you know giving him high fives when he decided to drop out of whatever conventional education place that he was in because I know how African parents get down so for sure Asian parents are worse he's doing the best that he can and then here he goes introducing somebody that he looks up to on stage and then he's met with a volley of racial insults <laughs> Tony Hitchcock is dead. Oh, he's done for. I feel sorry for the guy, but what a, what what an own goal. And I had never heard anybody call me that C word. Um so I was very, very shocked when I heard it. If true, just imagine how brutal that is to have never been called that derogatory term and then have a fellow comedian be the one to break the news to you. <laughs> Life is cruel. What did the crowd do? Because all I heard with some laughter. The, the, the ironic part, um, I just got off stage um, talking about, I, before I went off stage, my whole set was about stop Asian hate. I had a whole chunk of jokes about stop Asian hate and the audience was responding really positive to that. I was getting applause breaks and laughs, um, but, um, when he said what he said, the uh, some of the audience were vis 
were were visibly uh, uncomfortable, uh, especially the female audience members. You can tell that from the video, though. It doesn't look like they were all like you know bent over the chair laughing and stuff. It was a little bit uncomfortable. And again, we can't see because the angle of the video was just look like somebody was filming in between some people. You couldn't really see many people's faces, but from what you could feel, you could kind of surmise from the video. It did look like you know Tony Inka's jokes didn't actually land that well, which goes to show like if that if that video that was recorded, you know, document, you know. It was depicted a whole room of people absolutely shaking with laughter. Would we have received it differently? Would people be trying to find the people in the crowd that were laughing? Or would we just kind of completely ignore it and move on? That's the brutal part of all this sort of stuff, isn't it? Um, but I think the, the ones who are laughing are very small portion of the audience. But he continued his set, right? Uh, yes, he continued the set. And um, had he spent another one or another two minutes uh talking about um his chinese jokes um <laughs> oh, and Jesus he Christ, was Tony. bragging about um one time he um had a chinese uh, audience member confronting him uh of his chinese jokes of his offensive chinese joke and he kicked out this audience member um and then he made an immediate joke saying this is what i call a chinese takeout as a comedian myself i can respect um his profession uh if if that was just his said that was part of his act um i won't say anything about it what i had problem with is when he used um the the c word that the uh, asian the asian uh, racial slur is what i like, mostly you see he's pretty he's being pretty reasonable isn't he he's being pretty reasonable he's saying i don't actually have a problem with him you know spewing um anti-asian rhetoric in his jokes or you know kind of sprinkling that sort of comedy into his um or those jokes into his set i don't have an issue with it he has an actual issue with the fact that he came up on stage and effectively insulted him to a crowd of people right and basically, you know, that's basically what he has the main issue with and called him racial slur that he hasn't even heard until that day, right? An actual fellow comedian done so. So I can definitely understand that point of the actual issue. And of course, to make matters worse, if that video wasn't bad enough, we then have confirmation on here, um, you know, from some random person on Twitter, who knows, maybe he's lying and this isn't really true. But essentially, he's replying to somebody saying, how can Tony Hinchcliffe get cancelled? And this guy allegedly is basically saying that Anton's, a comedy club I'm, I'm assuming, has pulled two scheduled dates from him, issued all refunds on all tickets. So that's a partial answer to your questions. So I'm assuming KT has killed Tony, which are obviously, um, you know, the marquee event that um, Tony Hinchcliffe hosts. That's the one I mentioned where he gives um, a host of kind of up and coming comedians who put their name in the hat a chance to do a set for 60 seconds those dates were pulled from that club and tickets were issued a refund so that is effectively your answer in terms of what sort of cancellation can happen to somebody like that and then to make matters even worse somebody who he would probably deem to be a mentor in joe rogan has also decided to take him off of the show that they're meant to do together at the creek in the cave i think this is a newly opened place i'm pretty sure it was the one in new york that then went to they reopened it up in austin it looks like and they had a debt set set here for what the 12th and now it's been pushed back um to the 13th with only rogan um <laughs> which is pretty wild when you think about it because i, let, I think he if i'm not mistaken Tony Hinchcliffe went on the road very early on with joe he kind of got his start that way if i'm not mistaken i'm not really too sure about how he kind of came up but if i'm not mistaken that's pretty sure what happened joe obviously speaks very well of him but knowing what we know about joe rogan he's probably never going to address it because he doesn't really address those things publicly which i kind of rate him for to be honest i, I do like that approach i think if your friends are getting publicly chastised and cancelled the last Thing you should be doing is you know adding to the pylon and in conclusion i think i'm a little bit iffy about somebody within your own profession deciding to upload a video clip of you obviously in your you know maybe in your worst moment saying something stupid or doing something stupid in an effort to kind of get you cancelled i'm not really a fan of that and obviously nowadays there is currency in doing so there is clout in doing so there's prestige it can obviously further your career in some respects and i think if you're a you know if you're somebody that's doing that in your profession and you're a comedian you probably owe that person a conversation first before you take it public you can do what you please he could just still have a conversation and throw it up there it doesn't matter but he should at least pull him to a side and say hey i wasn't really a fan of what you said 
said there that was completely out of order you overstepped the line da, 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 da. you have a little tit for tat you have a little talk and then if you don't get a response that you need and you want to go public and you know basically eviscerate him on social media then fair enough but i don't get the feeling they had a conversation afterwards to kind of for him to basically f explain his position and basically maybe say sorry i don't think that was ever ha that ever happened so it, it did feel a little bit calculated if i'm not if i'm being honest maybe not who knows because it just probably happened but the fact that somebody was in a crowd recording a video it was super clear i'm sure they dissuade you or stop you from recording videos on most comedy shows so you don't put people set up and it doesn't spoil the show for anyone else coming in the future so it just felt a little bit premeditated that's the only thing i'll say about it but again Tony Hinchcliffe is an idiot. Do you know what I mean? Like saying stuff like that to people when you, you don't really know. I guess there's something comedic about it because you, you get that kind of shock value in the whole thing. But especially considering what's going on in the world, you just don't need that extra hassle right now. You can leave your edgy jokes for later. You don't need to be doing it right now. Do you know what I mean? Especially when you've been out of work for so long. Who wants to get cancelled straight away before you've even got any momentum, any sort of rhythm back in your set? It doesn't really make any sense. But hey, Maybe I'm reading too much into it and maybe it is what it is, but let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Do you think Tony Hinchcliffe will get cancelled? Do you uh, think I'm basically copping him too many pleas and he was completely in the wrong? Or do you think that there's something premeditated about this whole issue? I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions down below. Thanks again for watching. Peace.